This is a lesson over the circulatory system. This is part of human body step eight, and it's a level three lesson. So we're gonna look at the parts and functions of the circulatory system. But before we do that, let's review the function of the circulatory system. So I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to think about what the function of the circulatory system is and either write it down or say it aloud and then compare it against the answer. That's right. The circulatory system transports materials around the body. Let's get into the parts that help do this. The first part that we're going to talk about is the heart. And so the heart is an organ, and the organ is responsible for pumping blood throughout the body. Du -dun, du -dun, du -dun. Whenever you hear a heartbeat, that's exactly what it's doing, pushing blood throughout your blood vessels. Speaking of blood vessels, there are three different types of blood vessels that we're going to talk about. The first type are called arteries. Arteries carry the blood away from the heart. The way I remember this is arteries starts with the letter A. And then I remember, oh, arteries carry blood away from the heart. Since the arteries are carrying a blood, the blood away from the heart, they're the blood is full of oxygen or oxygen rich and it's carrying blood to the muscles and organs around the body. The second type of blood vessels are called veins. Veins do the opposite of arteries. They carry blood that's full of carbon dioxide back to the heart so they can go to the lungs and be breathed out. So veins are another type of blood vessel. The third type of blood vessel, and probably one of the most important types, are called capillaries. Capillaries are teeny tiny blood vessels, and it's when the arteries and the veins meet in the organs. Capillaries. Now we're going to get into the parts of blood. So along with the heart and blood vessels, another major part of the circulatory system is blood. Up in the left-hand corner, you can see a great picture of the different parts that you can find in a blood vessel or in blood. So blood is a tissue, and it's made of cells and cell parts that are carried in liquid. So let's break this down a little bit further. The first type of cell that you might see in blood is a red blood cell. They look like, um, I guess, frisbees maybe that are flattened in the middle. Red blood cells are very special and they have the job of carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout the bloodstream. So that's the primary role of red blood cells, carrying oxygen and carrying carbon dioxide. Another type of blood cell that you'll find in blood are white blood cells. And you're gonna learn more about the different types of white blood cells when you get to human body step nine and start studying the immune system. So white blood cells help fight invaders. And you can see in the picture, they're the really big blood cells and they're almost purplish looking. Another type or another part of blood are things called platelets, platelets. And so platelets are really important because when you get a cut, the platelets um, help clot the blood. And so it keeps you from bleeding forever. You only have a certain amount of blood in your body and that blood is moved around the body. So you can't have blood in all places at once. And you can't lose a lot of blood, otherwise your body goes into something called shock. The final part of blood is something called plasma. And plasma is the yellowish liquid part of uh, the image above to the left. So plasma is the liquid and it's the liquid that holds blood cells and platelets. So there's blood that's broken down into its parts. 
So let's talk about interactions, and I'm going to let you do most of the work here. So the first interaction I want you to think about is the circulatory system with the skeletal system and or muscular system. And I'll give you a little hint here. Cardiac, smooth, sternum. How do you think they interact together? So if you struggled with this a bit, you need to remember that there is cardiac muscle and smooth muscle that you can find as part of the muscular system. Cardiac muscle is found in the heart. That's what keeps the heart beating all the time. Smooth muscles are found on the inside of your blood vessels, so the inside of your veins, arteries, and capillaries, and they help move the blood throughout the bloodstream. Another way that you could talk about um, circulatory interacting with skeletal and muscular is through protection. So you know the skeletal system protects a lot of uh, other body systems. And so you have your sternum, which is part of the skeletal system. It's that great big bone uh, in your chest that um, is where your ribs come together in the front, and that protects your heart. So it's a very important part of the circulatory system. What about the circulatory system with the nervous system? There's your hint. So remember, a part of your brain is the brain stem, and your brain stem helps control the vital involuntary actions, such as your heart beating or your diaphragm contracting and relaxing. So your circulatory system works with your nervous system to keep that heart beating at all times, and you don't even have to think about it. Another interaction that I want to talk about is circulatory system with digestive system, and this should be um, a little bit of a review because we talked about this just the other day. Here's your hint. Think about the tiny finger-like structures called villi. <clears throat> So just a reminder, you have capillaries that surround your villi, or your tiny finger-like structures. And in the, the, what the capillaries do is they allow nutrients and energy to be absorbed into the bloodstream in order for the nutrients to be carried all around the body. And finally, we're going to talk about the circulatory system system with the respiratory system. This should be super easy to remember because we've talked about this the most recent. And I want you to think about the tiny air sacs that are in your lungs, and those air sacs are called alveoli. I want you to remember uh, what happens at those tiny air sacs. So if you had a hard time remembering, I'll refresh your memory. Those tiny air sacs are surrounded by, once again, capillaries. And at the site of the capillaries, um, oxygen and carbon dioxide trade place within the bloodstream. And so oxygen will enter the bloodstream while carbon dioxide will exit the bloodstream. And that way it can be, the carbon dioxide can be released through the lungs. That was a lesson over the respiratory system, human body, step eight.